Hey, uh, today we're talking about constructors in Java. A constructor is just a special method within a class. It's used to initialize objects. By using a constructor, we can create objects with unique values. When you create an object, you can pass arguments to a constructor to set up the initial values. Here's a demonstration. What we're going to do is create a new class. Let's go to File, New, Java Class. Let's create a class of students. This will be the student class. What are some attributes that a student should have? They should have a name. Let me zoom in a little so you can read it. An age, int age. A GPA, meaning grade point average. Let's create a Boolean of is enrolled. That is good enough for now. There's one issue with this. Let's say that all students that I create using this class, they're all going to be named SpongeBob. Going back to my Java file, I'll create a few students. We type the name of the class, a name for this object, let's say student1 equals new student, the name of the class again. Then we'll create a second student, student2. I'm going to output student one's name, student one dot name, as well as student two's name. The issue that we have is that all students that we create, all student objects, they're all named SpongeBob. What if we would like to give each object a unique name? Well, we can do that with the help of a constructor. A constructor is just a special method within a class. To set up a constructor, we type the name of the class, in this case, student. You need a set of parentheses, then a set of curly braces. We automatically call this constructor when we instantiate an object of that class. When we say new, then the name of the class, parentheses. Behind the scenes, we're calling this constructor. And we can pass in arguments. Within the set of parentheses, we can pass in arguments. So let's pass in, what are we missing? A name, age, GPA, is enrolled as well, but we'll take care of that momentarily. Let's pass in a name, age, and GPA. Student one's name will be SpongeBob. SpongeBob's age will be, let's say 30. He seems about 30. SpongeBob's GPA can be 3.2, that's pretty good. We have a warning. Our constructor isn't set up to take these arguments. Going back to our constructor, since we're receiving arguments, we need a matching set of parameters, just like any other method. We have a string for name, integer of age, double GPA. We'll take care of these three first. We have string name, int age, double GPA. To assign some of these attributes, we're going to use the this keyword this dot, the name of the attribute, this dot name equals our parameter of name. This dot age equals the age that we receive. This dot GPA equals the GPA that we receive. Going back to our Java file, we can now construct an object. If I attempt to run this currently, we are receiving a warning our constructor expects three arguments, but we don't pass in any. Zero are found. If I were to run this, we get this error message. Actual and formal argument lists differ in length. In order for us to create a student object, we have to pass in these three things. A string for the name, an integer for the age, and a double for the GPA. If we are missing these three, we can't construct an object but previously we could without the constructor. For our second student, let's pass in a name of Patrick. Patrick will be 34. Patrick's GPA isn't too good. It's a 1.5. All right, let's test this. We're printing student one's name and student two's name. We get SpongeBob and Patrick. Let's display some of the other attributes. We have name, age, GPA. 
We'll do this with student2 as well. student2.age, student2.gpa. SpongeBob. SpongeBob is 30 years old. SpongeBob's GPA is 3.2. These are all the unique attributes of our student object, student1. Student2's attributes are Patrick, age is 34, GPA is 1.5. With the this keyword, this refers to the object we're currently constructing or otherwise working with. Imagine that when we construct student1, imagine we replace the this keyword with the name of the object. We're assigning student1's name equal to the name that we receive. Same thing applies with our age and our GPA. The same thing would apply with student2. When we construct student2, imagine during the process we replace this with student2. This refers to the object we're currently working with or constructing. With these parameter names, they don't necessarily need to be the same as your attribute names. Just to demonstrate, let's rename name as A, age as B, GPA as C. This.name equals A, this.age equals B, this.gpa equals C. This should work too. Each object still has their unique attributes. But I like to keep the parameter names the same as the attributes. It makes the code easier to read and understand. We haven't assigned this attribute of is enrolled. Each object that we create using this constructor, let's assign this object's is enrolled attribute equal to, you don't always necessarily need to assign arguments to these attributes. For example, let's just say that when you become a student, you are enrolled. That is true. We don't necessarily need to pass in an argument for that. Going back to our main class, let's print take student ones is enrolled attribute and then print it. We'll do the same thing with student two, Patrick. When we create a student object, we're automatically setting is enrolled to be true. They are enrolled in classes. And that applies to Patrick as well, student two. Let's create another student object just so that we get the hang of this. Repetition is going to help you remember. Let's create student three. Student three is an object. New student. To create a student, we have to pass in three things. A string for the name, an integer for the age, and a double for the GPA. Student three will be Sandy. Sandy is 27, let's say. Sandy is smart, she'll have a 4.0 GPA. And then we'll print student three's attributes. Student three dot name, student three's age, student three's GPA, student three is enrolled. Our object of student three has these attributes, Sandy, 27, 4.0, and true. If your class has any methods, for example, all students have the method to study. Void study. I'll just output the following. Let's take our name attribute, but I'm going to use this.name plus the text of is studying. Let's delete these print line statements. We'll take student one, call the study method. Then we'll do this with student two and student three. SpongeBob is studying, Patrick is studying, Sandy is studying. After assigning values to your attributes using a constructor, you can use them within methods too, or change them. This refers to the object we're currently working with if student three, meaning Sandy, was to call her study method, imagine we're replacing this with student three, student three's name attribute. All right, everybody, those are constructors. They're a special method found within a class to initialize objects. You can pass arguments to a constructor when you initialize them. They're used to set up the initial values when you construct an object. A constructor is automatically called when you create a new object but you need a matching set of arguments if there's any parameter set up, just like any other method. 
By using a constructor, we can create objects with unique values. And well, everybody, those are constructors in Java.